Welcome to Real Depth, the podcast exploring Christianity, philosophy, and personal growth. Join us on a journey to challenge your beliefs, uncover insight for daily life, and cultivate meaningful change. James 2.14 through 17 and James 2.20 through 23. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, and what good is that? Also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works. The Lord desires his people to be the Lord desires his people to spread his kingdom here on earth and to reestablish the endemic relationship that he once had with Adam and Eve. And that requires action. That requires taking care of people and bringing the kingdom back to this broken world one soul at a time. Definitely. You know, I, uh, it's bringing us back to the Edenic uh, concept of humanity, of walking with God, uh, abiding in God, allowing our every thought and action to be in consideration of what we'd, he would have us say or do. Um, having that faith that we're going to be led, allow ourselves to be led into a place where we're going to be most useful to ourselves and to those around us because that's God's will. That's to, to build his kingdom. I believe that's what, um, that would look like, you know, um, the, do you think, you know, The story of Adam and Eve, right after they they sin, they eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, um, God goes looking for them. So, Adam and Eve are in the garden, doing their thing. Mm. What, What is your impression of where God was before he was looking for them? Or was he there and he's just suddenly saying, hey, what's going on? Like, well, I do definitely think that there are some like hidden aspects when reading these stories. Cause a lot of the times we have this thing called the lullaby effect, where hmm. when you hear something over and over again, you kind of lose the story. Hmm. You know, you just assume things because you've heard it for so long. Yeah. Like for instance, how does God just lose Adam and Eve? Right. You know, like, where'd you guys go? Yeah, exactly. You're, you mean to tell me that this God that knows everything, sees everything, knows your heart and your mind, couldn't see you, couldn't know where you were. You know, he wanted, he knows where you are. He, he wanted that kind of, uh, response, I suppose. I don't mm. know. I don't know. I'm not too good at interpreting things. And, yeah, but, that's, but yeah. It, uh, it definitely kind of, uh, what am I trying to say? Well, that's, that's what it comes down to, you know, is the interpretation. These stories are passed down to us. And like you said, it's not that God lost them and was looking for them. Like, where, where did they go? Are they under this bush? It was more like, hey, or maybe what's that, going on? Why are that, you... Maybe that, um... God looking for Adam and Eve kind of signifies in the story well, of hiding from the him. initial separation from God to begin with. Right. Right. Because once they once they ate that, then they kind of once once they ate of the knowledge of of good and evil, then they knew essentially what it is they that determined innocent. well they 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 discovered that they could indeed for themselves determine mm. what was right and wrong. Right. And that initiated the separation from right. God because it 
means that you're no longer following God, that you're putting yourself first, thinking that you know better. Yes, that you can do God's Because job. before that, it's not that it was blind obedience, but there was a very clear um, pathway forward. Hmm. But then after eating that, it made humanity be able to determine what it is that they should do. And that separated them from God. They lost the story at that point. Right. They lost the plan. Yeah, they lost the plan for how they can be um, their best selves. It was no longer obedience that was easy at that point because now they now are. Work. Yeah, now they are getting in the way, and that yeah. it was never specified either that Adam and Eve weren't meant to work. Sure. And it doesn't say that they never were. It's not not that they were uh, just laying around all the time. I think to me, what 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 I the impression I get from that is that right. It's not like they were just not doing anything. Yeah, they but they were put into the garden to take care of There wasn't anything it. required for them to do to go out and find sustenance and to be taken care of. Everything was just kind of available, and they were free to explore. Well, it's just, I, I think uh, it, it turned the perspective a little bit. When God cursed the earth and Adam, mm -hmm. that it changed the perspective. Now, instead of doing so for the glory of God that you did so without hesitance, now it's painful to do it. Now you recognize that mm -hmm. there is, the, the there's a struggle requires in it. requires energy, and it's like you only have so much energy in a day and you, but but now you're just prone to sleep before that now you're just prone to complaining about it i think sure you know you're noticing it <laughs> yeah now you're noticing like instead because when it when it's done for the glory of god there isn't anything that you're not willing to do when mm -hmm. you're in the right spirit but mm -hmm. when you let something separate you from god like that hmm. then you're not in the right spirit and you complain about everything something uh it reminds me of something i read uh, in an amazing book that allowed me to comprehend the mechanics of surrender called untethered soul um, but uh, uh, something from there is talking about the the spirit of a person and the energy that you have inside of you so when you're in a depressed withdrawn state uh, so let's say you you just experienced a breakup or something like that and it was it was a very substantial relationship that you had and suddenly you're without this person not around them anymore and you feel lost and depressed and just a mess um, and you, you you're it, it's hard to find the ability to do anything to get yourself up and go find something to eat or to um, put clothes on go to work you know whatever clean yourself uh, but then imagine, okay, a few weeks go by and you're still in this depressed state, right? But now you get a phone call. And on the other line is your significant other, your girlfriend. And, or maybe it's your wife, you know, if you're, whatever the relationship may be. And they say, hey, I messed up. I really want to see you. I really want to reconcile with you. And that lowness of energy that you were experiencing, that inability to get yourself up and take action, take care of yourself, suddenly goes away and you're filled with energy and you're like, yeah, all right, let's do this. You know, that you're, you're overcome with this zest for life again because you have something to live for and you feel maybe um, you have this, 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 purpose, this invigoration comes back inside of you. I, and I feel like that's uh, maybe not that it has anything it's not like the relationship we have with God that we have with each other, but that that energy that wells up inside of us because of that connection that we think we have or don't have and how much effort we're putting into having that connection um brings up that energy inside of us and that's so if we're living in line with where um, God is calling us to be then we're going to feel energized and fulfilled and if we're not we're, we're going to be struggling and we're going to be toiling and kind of lost um, so I wonder if the fall of man in the Garden of Eden 
did things get easier for us after Jesus came and sacrificed himself? At that point, was it like, okay, you still have to work at life. <laughs> you still well, got to try. What do you mean by things got easier? Um, the, the ability to have a connection with God, you know, like that. It, I think so. Yeah. When the veil was torn. Right. Right. There, it's no longer the separation between, um, us and God and we don't have to, it just, the, the, the old, old Testament God, the relationship that humans had that's portrayed in the old Testament is very ritualistic and rigid and it, it appears that way anyway and that's my limited understanding i haven't done enough research into that myself but um <clears throat> in the new testament where suddenly this grace is given to us the ultimate sacrifice is awarded so that each of us has it becomes so much easier to live and to find yourself and I think that translates into everything, not just our connection with God, which is the ultimate thing, but that, that trickles down to everything else, you know? If we have that connection with God, and since that's easier, everything else then becomes easier. So, uh, it's just, I, I wonder if after that, it wasn't so hard to survive anymore. Maybe farming was more difficult, you know, before uh, Jesus was, was crucified. I, I don't know. That's uh, <laughs> interesting. Well, I think to, to find that out, maybe we would have to look at, like, archaeological evidence and mm -hmm. different stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't... I'm in your boat. I don't know too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's... I don't uh, know how to answer we, that we need to learn. We need some scholars. Are you a scholar? <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, so that was... Yeah. Faith, uh, faith is completed by works. Yes. Um, the fruits... The, yeah, the, the fruit of the Spirit that you manifest by your works, that the works that you're doing through faith, by the way, because as the verse... De dis ad yeah. <laughs> as the verse described, uh, that works without faith is useless. Hmm. I mean, you can do a whole lot of good, but sure. it destroys your heart and it destroys your soul yes. if you do it for the wrong reasons. Yes. And likewise, with just having faith and not pursuing mm. the things that God calls you to pursue. Yes. Then that's when you, you get up to the, to the gates and Jesus says, I never knew you. Right. You're, you're an idol, you know, you, you were hollow. You, yeah, you... not only will we have to answer in life for the things that we've done, we will doubly have to answer for the things that we didn't do. Hmm. The opportunities the that we had, we had that we didn't right. seize. Man, it's, I wonder how many of those I've had. Do, you, do any stand out to you, things that you're like, man, I, this was something that was there and I didn't take advantage of it. I've, and you've maybe felt like it was from God or I, I feel like those, those always come up in a lot of, um, for me, at least it's, it's things that need to be said that were never said mm. things, you know, conversations that I've had with people in the past where I just have this, this feeling just, it wells up and it's like, I need to say this. I mean, you have to be careful with that kind of stuff too, mm. but you know, it's Don't just trust your heart. <laughs> important things that I needed to say in the moment that I never did because either I was afraid or some other reason. And mm. I think I'll probably have to answer for those. And uh, the opportunities lost as I see certain things go by, but not knowing where it'll take me or... Mm, hesitating. Yeah, the hesitation in order to take something, but then you hesitate too much and, the, and it's gone. Interesting. Do you think that certain things only come up once in your life? Certain things? Like no. certain opportunities? I think mul multiple times can a single opportunity come up to you, but mm -hmm. it'll be presented in a different way than it was sure. before. Right. It's not going to look the same, feel the same. Mm -hmm. I think if, if maybe something, if we had made the wrong decision and didn't seize the opportunity to buy Lomker's Holler, then... Mm. We probably would have been presented later in the future with a different opportunity. It just wouldn't have been when we need we we wanted it to happen. You know, like this interesting. This move down here, it wasn't just that 
it was presented to us as an opportunity for us to seize right then, but it was also something that we really wanted to do as well. Right. So it kind of lined up with, it was our interests and what we also thought that God was calling us to do. But then if we didn't do that, then it would have been so much more difficult and the trials would have been a lot different. Yeah, for sure. If we would have uh, waited to do because there, there's a lot of like, oh, we should have bought this then, or we should have done, shoulda, made this decision couldes. instead. Yeah, the shoulda, <laughs> shoulda, coulda, wouldas are very prevalent in, in life. Yeah. But that's our fault. Yeah. We just hey. didn't seize the opportunities when they were presented, mainly out of fear. It's always out of a spirit yes, of fear man. do we miss the <clears throat> things that truly are necessary for us so tired of making decisions and living life based out of fear and, the, and most of the time it's the fear that you're going to suffer more than you already are <laughs> right. right right it's it's always like oh that's gonna it's gonna be horrible for me and then but oftentimes i've noticed that if you just take the opportunity especially if you do it willingly hmm. if you're forced into something unwillingly then you're going to resent it the whole time you're yes. doing it but if you just make the the flip and you just are determined to go through it no matter what it's going to do to you mm -hmm. it's more fulfilling it's more satisfying and you're a lot better at it than you previously thought you were going to be yes definitely how well do you think you are today at abiding with god what what yeah Probably not as good as I could be. And like I said, yeah, a lot of my decisions most of the time are based in fear. Uh, or at least a lot of the decisions to not do something. Hmm. You know, just a recent example. Um, and I, I've been thinking about it the whole time. We were, we were back in Ohio visiting over the Easter weekend. Yeah. And uh, we were, yes, we were on our way back. We had stopped at a rest stop to use the bathroom and things like that the and facilities. there's a guy just over working on his car and uh, he comes over to us because um, we were just I, apparently he had been going down the line like asking everybody or every new okay. person that showed up but he needed a new I think it was a serpentine belt for his car <laughs> the, the old one broke <laughs> and uh, he, he said he just didn't have enough cash to cover it um, with getting somebody out there with the parts it was going to be a a hundred and seventy some dollars I think mm. is what it was and he was just looking for little bits of help um, of course this is where Kayla kind of jumps on situations that I tend to kind of sit back from mm -hmm. uh, so she says and I didn't even get a chance to respond well didn't get a chance to but she responded first basically <laughs> before I could say anything at all and she was like well here let me check my wallet let me see what I got she had like three dollars Hmm. of cash in her wallet so I just let it go I didn't say anything and I was like yep okay just yeah give him the three bucks knowing the whole time I had a whole 50 in my wallet hmm. so it was like out of the fear that I might have needed that at some point for something that I wanted I didn't jump on the opportunity to abide how I should have and I think like obviously people are um, un unwilling to do these types of things for certain people because you know you think they're a bum and they're lying about it they just yeah. want it for drugs and alcohol like all this type of stuff right but i legitimately think that this guy really did need help based on like the situation and it was an opportunity that i missed hmm. so you, you feel guilty about that i do i do kind of feel guilty about it because i knew I mean, and it's, and here's the thing, it, it was just me being passive about it, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I've always had a problem with passivity, yep. just kind of letting life happen to me and not taking advantage of things. Oh, here come my neighbors. Hello, neighbors. Hi, neighbors. We're just two guys in the creek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they're going to be looking. Yeah, they're on their way out. Woo. Be safe out there, brothers. These are the restaurateurs. Yeah, those are the restaurant owners. Cool. Um, but, yeah. but yeah, just, I, it was my passivity because I was like, Kayla's got this, Kayla's got this, but no, I should have been leading the situation, but mm -hmm. I wasn't. I stepped back and let my wife do it because 
I just, it's not that I feel guilty more or less for not helping the man as I should have or as I could have. That's the bigger, right. like should or could, two different things. But I could have, so should I have. Right. As well as I fell back into old habits. That's also guilty. I didn't lead the situation as I should have. Right. You know, th those situations are tricky to me. You know, I, in my younger days, I was very eager and willing to help anybody who came up to me. Um, and it started getting harder and harder to part with if I had any money to give. Uh, it all came down to like their story. Like, do they have a good story? Is it at least entertaining? Like a lot of times you can tell, or at least I feel like I could tell that they really didn't need it. They just wanted it for some bad habit or maybe they just needed to get some food. I, I, it's hard to tell. And that's the thing is like, I. that's another thing. I didn't take the opportunity to even to talk to this to, man to figure, to out. figure out hmm. whether or not he really did need help or yeah. if the, the help that I was supposed to give him was more than that. It was sure. different. Right. Yeah, you could have right. Huh. Interesting. And that's that's more or less there's a there's a lot of aspects to the situation that well, I'm wrestling with that I kind of feel guilty about. An another part of that is protecting your family. You know, there's this stranger that is coming up to you asking for money. You've got a wife and a young child and you do have some money and you do possibly have some time and energy that you could take and help this person, but what about putting your family in danger, you know? So it's... It's a balance. It's at the same time, I guess, you, you, like you said, you didn't take that m time to assess it, to take it further, mm -hmm. to and you know, from this check man, with God on it. This man's demeanor... Didn't get a weird vibe I didn't, from Yeah, him, I, I didn't think. get a weird... He seemed like a very nice dude. He was very clean. Yeah. So I assumed that he wasn't a bum. He wasn't homeless or something like mm -hmm. that. He wasn't just down on his he well he, he just, was just down on his yeah, luck he, he was just, just in a in a, in a tough situation he was just in a spot help. and needed just a little bit of help whether yeah. that help be a word or whether that yeah. help be uh, a little bit of time and money yeah whatever it may be sure sure yeah it's um it's tough i've, I've it was got... my opportunity to manifest fruits yeah and i wilted <laughs> <laughs> well you know that's good that you you have that willingness to process that and think back on it and consider all these different variables and options that maybe in the moment you didn't so what what was it you think that made you quick to just be like to be passive were you did you have other things going on or was it more no it's just it's just old habits that hmm. I had fallen into it was just the way that I was necessary like even while I worked at uh, Cinnabon and Annie, it's like I just just didn't like people you know mm -hmm. like I like, mean oh, I, I am a kind of like people my time yeah I am a kind me. of people person but I was like a no new friends type of yeah. type of deal I don't have like time for you yeah. yeah like I had to really I like before to before I let my barriers down and let you in to be a part of my life like I have to really get to know you first right you gotta we gotta prove ourselves each other it's and especially and especially going. i'm a bit you know if you fall back into those selfish habits yep. and i'm no. you know that's and that's my money I, like yeah. that's yeah that's my money that's my time that's you know like just go away leave us alone we were having You're such a great time me. right <laughs> take your yeah filth and be gone yeah don't inconvenience <laughs> me at all but yeah. that's that's not how interesting that's not what Jesus would do that's there not, you go what would Jesus do? yeah what would Jesus do that's not what Jesus would have done that's not yeah, he how would've he would have been, been like hey I'm here how can I help he would have he would have laid hands on the man and said your car be healed and it would have worked it'd be so interesting ah. to have him as a role model as a married man with children though like how would he have done things differently because he was a single man leading a family of disciples and you know all, all the other followers that that he did have and supporters um well believers. i think jesus in a situation would be able to assess a situation a lot better than i could <laughs> sure uh as well as yes. um you know when jesus speaks i i mean i could imagine that it would have definitely put a lot of people in angst at ease. Hmm. Right. So if you had somebody who might be willing to hurt you to get 
what right. they want. Yes. Might not necessarily be able to talk them down. Yeah. yeah. Definitely and, and be able to see, change the situation. Because he's, he's healed. What was the go and sin no more, you know? Like, that was always... That stands out to me as something he was saying to people a lot when they needed healing or they were having trouble. He would address their specific situation and also, at the same time, their spirituality. Like, you have this affliction because something's not right inside of you. So, carry on with your life, but... Be more intentional, make good decisions, and and in a lot of instances, help when you can help. A lot of instances, love projected love. really curbs. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, maliciousness. Mal- malicious. Maliciousness. Ba- yeah, like malicious, malicious intent. Malicious intent. There we go. And uh, on that note, it takes me uh, takes us over to fruits of the spirit. You know. What is that love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, faithfulness, gentleness, gentleness, and self-control. self-control? Yeah. Okay. So are these the things that we're going to manifest through our actions? Those are the fruits that are, 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 are is fruits a bit more broad when it's talking about like the, the works that you're doing and the fruits that are created because of those works. Um, is it limited well, to those I think, things? So those are the fruits of the spirit that when mm. you're fully invested, mm. that when you give yourself fully, that these are the traits in which you manifest forward. And then it's right. the, these the gifts fruits, that you're given. Yes. The, then there's the works that you do through these fruits that complete your faith and spread like, yeah, when it says like fruits, you'll mm-hmm. know them by their fruits. It may be referring to the fruit of the spirit that you can genu- gen- genuinely tell if someone is fully committed to the spirit because of their demeanor, right. as well as the things that they manifest as a result of their actions, the gifts right. that or the blessings that they right. that, they're that they re- uh, re- bring revealing. to society. Yeah, that yeah, that I could I had the opportunity to bless that man that day and I failed to do so. You know what? You're going to have more opportunities to bless people. And every time we... I feel like... I don't know how much you're wrestling with this, uh, but because you are, the next time something comes up, you're going to be quick... I'm going to be a little bit more conscious about... But, yeah. I would would hope and I would pray about it that... Yes. I would have good discernment in these situations that I wouldn't just hopelessly lead my family to destruction somehow, <laughs> you know, just well, yeah, trying, I, I, trying to ruin myself to bless somebody, you know, it just, I don't, but then again, there's this thing that I've always heard at least from other people that you are allowed to test God on is how much he'll give back to you when you give. Hmm. You know, like, right. I could have given him that $50 then, and I would have been out, you know, maybe a little bit of help, some time, a word, but then that would come back to me in the form of something greater. Right. A little bit later, and not perhaps when I wanted it to, Right. but it would. Right. Hmm. It's amazing, you know, just the... The... The journeys that we're on, the lessons that we're learning, and I wish there was a way to be able to encapsulate and present information and lessons that we've learned to people, like a video, that that would, like, I'm, I'm thinking more for, like, uh, our children, like, just to... I was so rebellious and so desired to just do things my own way and learn my own lessons. I'm going to make these mistakes. I know, yeah, that's what happens all the time. When you bang your head into the wall, you're going to hurt your head, but I'm going to do it anyway and hope something different happens. (laughs) If if only there were a way of helping people with that spirit, I I don't know. Well, that's 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 where we have faith. We give it to God. We trust God that... Like we're we're just gonna charge head on into this situation, yeah. And we trust God that we'll come out the other side, perhaps a a little bit different than before. Yeah, well, that's that's one thing you can always count on, right? Change things will continue to change, and the thing that doesn't change is God, though. You know, his His truth and His words over our lives, and the abiding within Him that doesn't change as long as we're 
pursuing that and seeking to be in his company, to follow his lead, and to go where he calls us. You know, uh, it's something I keep thinking about in the situation with this, with this guy or, or any other similar circumstance. If it did end up being something where they, this person had malicious intent, you would have the opportunity to get away from that, I believe, you know, especially because you're going into it with willingness to help and be of use. I don't know, the, the fear inside of me is like, oh, I'm going to get taken advantage of, something bad's going to happen, I need to protect, I need to preserve, stay away. <laughs> but I think just like we were talking earlier, you're going to continue to get opportunities in your life <clears throat> to pursue the path you're supposed to take. And if you're, if you, if you allow yourself to be blinded by something, um, you, you won't see that opportunity. But if you start down a path and then suddenly there's a threat or something bad's happening, you're going to get the opportunity to correct it. It's like, um, my wife and I have very different takes on storms and tornadoes. Um, for some reason, I'm not, I'm not worried about the tornadoes. Like, they're going to come, and that's fine, but I... I <laughs> they're going to come, and that's fine. They're, they're here, you know? That's, that's like part you of... You can't make them go away just by saying, shush. Right. <laughs> go away, tornado. Bad tornado. Bad tornado. <clears throat> but... I believe that we're going to get the opportunity to, to protect ourselves and preserve our family because we are doing our best, I'm doing my best, to live in line with the plan that God has over me. So it's like, at what point do you need to be overly prepared for a situation? It's like, well, I'm going to do all these things and gather all this information. I guess if that's what you're called to do. Uh... Well, see, I, th I, I think, yes, it's a good idea <clears throat> to be prepared, but I think also that you, when you get put into situations, like, for instance, this, this time, this was my missing of the mark, so to speak. Mm -hmm. This was uh, me falling back into my sinful ways, which mm -hmm. is funny because sin is an archery term, uh, mm -hmm. meaning that you just failed to hit your target. Hmm. And I've always said this before to other people that uh, you don't, it doesn't have to be a big thing like idolatry or murder in order mm -hmm. for it to be a sin. Right. Right. It could be a lot yeah. and it could be very vague, but all it is, is just you miss the mark. Yeah. That's all it is. But like what well, you said, you have the opportunity to come back and recorrect. Right. Uh, what was the thing you said? Because I cannot remember where I was going with this. Um... Uh, I don't know. I was I was talking about tornadoes and <laughs> being prepared for, oh, for incoming threats. Yes, I do think that when you get put into situations uh, that you need to correct, like a trial from God, mm -hmm. that you you know, like you had said in a previous episode, that like when you pray for patience, mm -hmm. you don't just become patient. Right. You go through the trials mm -hmm. that make you, you see learn, the you learn patience. Learn patience. You learn you the, the necessity of patience. To and that's gain that's. Precisely what this was was a trial for me to hmm. overcome a past that was still haunting me. Yes, a portion of my past that's still haunting me, and I failed to hit the target. But I was prepared for that instance. You know, like right. I had. We rarely ever carry cash on us. It's, right. it's a very rare instance that we have cash, especially cash in that large amount. Right. So, yeah. Typically. Yeah. So, like, like what I said, Kayla only had like three <clears throat> spare dollars crumpled up in the bottom of her purse. You know, mm -hmm. like it's, we don't ever carry cash. Hmm. But I had, I had been prepared ahead of time, for this opportunity. Yeah. And. And you didn't necessarily need it for anything. And specific. I didn't necessarily like, yeah, need it for anything here. specific. Huh. So yes, it was. A, it was definitely a trial. I think it was a situation brought on by God's grace to help me, like I had been praying for, to relieve myself of these uh, tendencies mm -hmm. of just wrongfulness. And 
I failed to hit this one, but there will be more opportunities That's for right. me to correct myself in the future. And the more aware I am of it, the more I can work to correct my behavior and to perform the way that God intends me to perform. And that's 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 the whole that's the point, right? You know, the the pursuit toward growth, um, continually seeking. You know, and it doesn't have to be huge leaps and bounds. It's just like wrestling with this again. I don't know when was the last time you thought about this before this conversation. Oh, probably. Well, actually, yeah, it was before this weekend. Um, I don't know if I was ever gonna like talk about it over over the little trip that we had but yeah it was uh definitely i think prior and it's not like i just i'm like actively letting it eat me alive it's just every now and again it'll just pop in my head and like i'll just be like you know yeah that happened right and then so I'll, I'll move on with my life but it's it's constantly there it's reminding me hey right like you, you can do this you can do better you can next do better time. yep and that's that's amazing that we have the grace uh, of God in our lives that we don't just get one chance to get it right. You know, it's uh, our lives are continuing to unfold in front of us, and it's not done until He says it's done. And just like a when is a tree done growing? You know? mm-hmm. It's gonna. It, it, it always is growing. It's always reaching toward its goal until it can't anymore because it has given all the life that it has been given um and it's it's uh i don't know i i'm very excited to continue to hunt for my purpose and it's it's awesome to see your journey and the the lessons you're learning and sharing and um look forward forward to hearing what you guys have to say uh, what are you going through right now? What lessons are you learning? Think about it. Um, but yeah, I, I look forward to exploring more on our next episode. Yes, join us next time for more in-depth conversations and discovering our purpose. Our purpose. <laughs>